red camera for six grand. Okay, what's the catch here? That was my first thought when I saw this camera for the first time, and for good reason. It's no secret that Red Digital Cinema is one of the most widely recognized brands in the filmmaking industry. But when they first announced this little camera, it made a lot of creators, including myself, pretty skeptical on what their intentions really were with this thing. Using off-brand parts, slapping the red logo on them, and marking them up so they can make a profit is only the tip of the iceberg with this company. And I don't mean to throw shade with this video, like 80% of the cameras in our arsenal are red. I just want to give you guys an honest review from an unbiased opinion. A cinema camera that can fit into the palm of your hand while maintaining that quality and consistency that you see in high-end professional cameras seems too good to be true. I'm making the video that I wish I saw months ago before we purchased these cameras and hopefully it can give you a little bit of insight on how these cameras can be used and how we use them. We have a Helium DSMC2 body which is actually the A-cam which you're seeing now and we often paired that with our Canon C200s which are still fantastic cameras to this day. But when diving into the workflow and trying to work with multiple codecs and color sciences, it can get pretty tough to match multiple angles from multiple different camera bodies stylistically. Turns out switching between Canon RAW and RED code isn't typically ideal, so we had a decision to make. Do we go with another DSMC2 body or do we just grab two Komodos? Which at that time were only just starting to make their way into the hands of people who weren't paid to review them, like us. We ultimately decided with the two Komodos, obviously, and I'm going to tell you why we came to this conclusion. Oh, by the way, all the B-roll you see in this video was shot on Komodo 4K 60 frames and 2K 120 frames. My first thoughts when I held this camera for the first time is how small it truly is. It feels lighter than my a7S III. Granted, adding a cage, lens, and TB50 adapter will make the setup a bit more bulky. It is still not nearly as colossal as our fully kitted out helium setup. And this makes the camera extremely ideal for run and gun situations. I can see this being a fantastic option for an on the go videographer who, like me, is always trying to find that one man band edge. One big thing for me was the autofocus, and even though this autofocus is still in beta, as with half the other features in this camera right now, it performs really well in non low light situations. Does the autofocus hunt sometimes? Yes. Are the low light capabilities as powerful as, say, a Sony mirrorless camera? No. But if your main camera right now is a RED, this is a perfect B cam or crash cam. You mount this thing on a Mobi and you've got a powerhouse rig for event coverages. And even as an A cam for productions that don't require an AK delivery. We tend to mostly use 6K 16x9 or 4K 16x9 for slow-mo. The only downfall of 4K is that there is a crop. A one and a half times crop to be exact. And that is one of my main overall gripes about this camera. If you want to shoot at higher frame rates, you gotta lower that resolution and deal with the crop. 2K at 120 frames a second still looks pretty good, but the noise and chromatic aberration become more apparent due to those massive crop factors. If you're planning on shooting higher frame rates with this thing, just be prepared to plan accordingly. When it comes to the camera software and overall usability, I haven't really noticed anything too troublesome. The tiny touchscreen and buttons are a pain to use sometimes, especially when you're strapped to a Mobi with a ready rig. It can be kind of awkward getting in a top mounted screen. Even the side record button can get kind of weird to get to at times when you have a cage on or you're, you know, you're strapped to a Mobi or a gimbal. And honestly, the menu system is pretty laggy right now. There's times on set when I want to play back video for a client and it's just like, super super laggy and it's kind of embarrassing so that's just one thing to keep in mind is that the menu system is not really fully fleshed out right now i'm not sure if this is something they can fix with future updates but it's not where it needs to be right now to combat this we actually use the smartphone app a lot and it's not like a typical smartphone app it's actually really really responsive and you can pretty much get to any setting you need on it there's even a touch to focus if you have an autofocus lens the menus themselves are pretty basic and anyone who has previously worked with a RED camera should be able to navigate them without any issue. It is worth noting that we had to send one Komodo unit back as we were getting this like weird green tint shift on camera boot up. RED said they've never seen this before, I'm not sure how much I believe them, but if you have a similar experience or something similar happened to you with this camera, let us know in the comments. And as of this video, we're actually down one Komodo right now as the SDI port in it shorted out, so we had to send that one back too. So we had to send two Komodos 
those back already. So make of that what you will. Uh, I'm not really sure how it happened. It kind of just happened one day on set. As for the green shift, it was fixed within a matter of weeks and it didn't cost us a dime as we were still under warranty. As shown in these clips, when it comes to dynamic range, the Komodo really delivers. We found that like most cinema cameras that shoot in RAW format, the footage is extremely flexible in post. Playing with the shadows and highlights, you can really see the dynamic range go to work here. And something like bringing up the shadows doesn't mess with the image quality too much unless you really go crazy with it. One of my favorite things about this camera is the inclusion of global shutter without sacrificing dynamic range or sharpness. Skin tones look pretty natural across the board. You're gonna get that weird green tint that most red cameras have nowadays. But simply throwing one of red's conversion LUTs on it without any correction or grading, it already looks pretty damn good. Many of the YouTube reviews I've watched on this camera absolutely rave about the dynamic range and what really impresses me about this camera the most is the highlight roll off, as you can see in these clips. Now it wouldn't be an honest review without pointing out some flaws this camera has because it does have some flaws. We already talked about the crop when shooting slow-mo and the menu layout, but I'd like to touch on some pitfalls here. This should already be second nature to anyone who has worked with a cinema camera before and this is not really an issue of usability but more of like a cosmetic issue. This camera requires more than just lenses and batteries to function in my opinion. The camera is damn near impossible to use without some kind of handle or gimbal. Also since the screen is on top of the body and very small, you will need a third party monitor to even see what you're shooting. Unfortunately, this is a problem you come across with a small square form factor like this. You can't really shoot handheld without some sort of handle. Also a big thing is it does not have any XLR ports, which I know the Canon C70, a direct competitor, does. So if you're kind of juggling between those two cameras, the Canon C70 does have the edge when it comes to audio ports. I've never used the C70, so I can't really talk about the image quality, but the Komodo's image quality is more than enough for me to rave about it here. To sort of wrap this video up, before I got here to Clockwork 9, I really had minimal experience with RED cameras or cinema cameras in general, and the Komodo was a welcome challenge as a filmmaker. I really learned a lot within the last two years when working with these things, when it comes to you know exposure and workflow, when working with R3D files. It's honestly been a breath of fresh air following a whole new workflow that makes me, as a filmmaker, stop and really think more about the shots that I'm getting. I've overall become way more intentional with my shots, and that's not just on shoots using the Komodo, but on shoots in general. Getting to know these cameras really makes me want to squeeze every drop of power I possibly can out of them. I really wanted to push their limits, and it got me out of a creative funk which motivated me to shoot more. It's not always easy in the beginning, but the end result usually makes it totally worth it. The picture quality straight out of the camera is enough to impress me, but when you pair that with its wireless communication features, its compact size, the ability to adapt multiple lenses, and the assortment of formats and sizes that you can shoot in, I really think this camera is one of the most versatile I've ever used. This camera was built to be a crash or B-cam where ease of use and reliability takes precedence over that film look, even though it is proven you can still get the film look out of these cameras. As I said before, if you own one of these mini beasts, please share your thoughts and experiences with us in the comments down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.